Imagine if you took Doom Eternal and instead of slaying demons, you were fixing the fashion mistakes of the local populace. Fashion Police Squad is the answer to that completely normal question. You'll add color with a shotgun, sew up fabric faux paws from afar with a machine gun, and swing through the city with your trusty belt through four hours of fashionista fun. Things can get a little overly complicated combat-wise, but there is a ton of referential fun to be had, so let's break it down in the Xbox era review of Fashion Police Squad. Fashion Police Squad wears its heart on its sleeves. This is an over-the-top first-person shooter that mixes 2D pixel models into a 3D environment with a plum. As the top agent of the FPS, you'll be working your way through 13 levels, which run through about three or four hours total time. The story is goofy and had me chuckling throughout. There are a lot of references to real-world memes and entertainment that fit this ridiculous, vibrant, over-the-top world. The game never stops introducing new mechanics, whether it's enemy types, your arsenal, or minigames, and those minigames are key as the combat, while fun, did get a little bit long in the tooth for me despite the game's short runtime. FPS goes for the Doom Eternal style of combat puzzles, where each weapon will only work on a specific NPC, with later enemies requiring combinations of weapons and their alternate attacks. You'll get five weapons in total. First up is the Paint Shotgun. It shoots a spread of paint to add color to gray enemies. The alternate fire sucks neon out of foes in the environment to power up the main shot. Next you have the sewing machine gun. The main volley is sewing needles that tighten up loose fitting suits of enemies, and your alternate fire is a fabric grenade needed for some of the more annoying foes. There are sock gnomes that latch onto NPCs wearing socks with sandals and chomp away over time. You have the water cannon, probably the most useful one. The main attack is a spray that can cool down fire foes, tighten up loose suits, and wash away neon colors. It'll also make the ground slick in front of you so that you can run faster and jump further. The main attack also powers up a meter, which you need for the alternate fire. This allows you to look down the sights and rapidly tack with high-powered water at a distance. There's a mystery weapon obtained near the end of the game. No need to spoil this one, but just know it's a lot of fun. And you have your Fab Slap Glove. This is your super meter ability, which allows you to teleport to and instantly defeat any enemy for a set period of time. Each weapon in the game isn't meant to kill, but to drip out your enemies. The world is basic looking 3D one full of vibrant colors. Every character and weapon model is a 2D pixel based sprite that is easy to read even when the combat becomes chaotic later on. The art style carries the game, and as a title based on fashion, it had to be great. One issue was the amount of screen tearing I saw on the Series X version that I played. Even with a variable rate refresh enabled display, it was noticeable. But without VRR enabled while capturing, it was downright terrible at times. Some of the earlier missions didn't seem to suffer that much, but when action got hectic later on, I started to get a little bit of a headache from it. Thankfully, there is a field of view slider in the graphics option, along with a quality settings toggle. Nearly every weapon prompt in the game told me to use keys on a keyboard for them, so I'm guessing there wasn't a ton done for this port. It feels like an indie PC title, thankfully one that has very good controller support. The only full-on voice work in the game is the opening title sequence. After that, every sound uttered in the game is a 16-bit era sounding grunt or short clip from the enemy characters. The music is excellent and fits the vibes of the world brilliantly. It's mostly dance and pop sounding synths early on with some genre shifts later to match the intensity of levels. And despite its basic port feeling nature, I didn't run into any bugs and quick resume worked flawlessly. Best I can tell, there is no online functionality in the title, nor did I feel much urge to go back for achievements or secrets. There are collectibles to find and you can hop back into any mission after you're done at your leisure. Wrapping things up with a nice pink bow. Fashion Police Squad is smart, plays pretty well, and it does not overstay its welcome. It is priced 20 bucks on Steam, and if that holds true for the Xbox launch, then I'd say it's a pretty easy recommendation for any lover of first-person shooters and fashion.